Today I'm going to tell you about the one thing that will murder all of the happiness and joy in your badass world. This one thing is an absolute thief. An absolute thief of your joy, your happiness, and most importantly, your peace of mind. Michael McLean, BrassBallsVideos.com. I am an ex-professional hockey coach, ex-championship amateur hockey coach, turned eight-figure entrepreneur. I am a husband, a father, and a small business owner just like you. You can uh, download a free copy of my brand new book below, Five Ways to Unfuck Your Life in the Next Month. Uh, the uh, link is below. A word of warning first. My, uh, my new book is admittedly not every entrepreneur's cup of whiskey. I wrote this book, it's only 22 pages. Uh, I wrote this book for champions, not chumps. I wrote this book for winners, not whiners. You have been warned, the uh, free link is below. So this is the kind of stuff that drives me fucking crazy. When I talk about cell phone addiction, you know, iPhone junkies and digital addiction and anti-social media and all the manufactured mental illness that we have to deal with in society today. The fact of the matter is this, 4%, 4% of people are actually suffering from real, real mental health issues. 4%. That means, that means out of all the people that are talking about their depression, their anxiety, their sadness, their worry, their stress, 4% have actual clinical mental illness, which leaves what? 96% fake, manufactured by the way they live their life. And nobody's gonna tell you that but yours relentless, but I'm telling you right now, what I'm gonna talk to you, what I'm gonna rant and rave about today is just so this is this is something that's been a burr in my saddle for the last 20 years i saw it coming with the internet i saw it coming with social media and then in 2009 when everybody started carrying their entire entertainment system the smartphone in 2009 we've taken all of this to the next level 2009 is when all the manufactured mental illness kicked in with our children, our teenagers, adults, people walking around, never ever disconnected from technology. And then all of a sudden, we have all these record suicide rates, depression rates, anxiety rates, mental Ill, uh, uh, illness rates. Well, no shit, Sherlock. You've been carrying a phone around in your hand for the last 15 years. You've never given yourself an opportunity to live your life, to be outside in nature, to get to the gym, to think deeply, to be in solitude, none of it. So this one thing is, and I talk to my hockey players about this all the time when I was coaching. I talk to my employees about this. Uh, I talk to my, my, at the kitchen table, my wife all the time, Krista, my 11 year old daughter. I talk about this all the time. This one thing is it just murders it just murders the joy in your life. It just literally murders all of the happiness. Everybody's happy this, they, they think they're entitled to happiness. You're not entitled to jack shit. There's a system for being happy. There's a system for having peace of mind. There's a system for being a joyful person. And it's the exact opposite of what 99.9% .9 of the normies are doing. Are you kidding me? Do you think there's any joy or happiness or wealth found inside your phone or on anti-social media? So I've always had a big beef with this and it's just getting worse every day. But I'm telling you, what this is designed to do and what I'm talking about now is social media. Thanks to the cell phone, your son and daughter and yourself and your queen, everybody in the world now has 24 seven access to what? social media it used to be you know before the smartphone you'd have to you know you'd be on Facebook for a while and then you'd go off your computer and you'd go to work or have lunch or go for a walk so there was a break there was a mental break you know you go to the bathroom or you whatever it is you had a little bit of a mental break 
in 2009 when everybody started carrying their entertainment center in their hand, well, guess what? 24-7 anti-social media. And I mean, Zuckerberg and, and guys like that, evil and corrupt to the fucking core. You know, they even, they even get caught admitting this. This is all it's designed to do. Uh, social media is designed to make you sad, to make you unhappy, to be a thief of your joy, your happiness, your focus, your mental health. So they're right on track. They're happy with all this. Big tech is very happy with this. Big media is very happy with this. They want you alone. They want you medicated. They want you sedated. They want you lost. And eventually they want you dead. You're, they're, not, they're not your friend. They're not your ally. They're the enemy. So when you're participating in social media, and this is the reason I don't participate in any of this fucking rat poison. None of it. I mean, I used, to, I used to participate in Facebook years ago, and I used to think, oh, it's important for business. And then I participated in Twitter years ago, and I was like, okay, are you kidding me? The only thing I do is host these videos on BoobTube. And I don't participate in it any personally. I mean, Mark does all this for me. But if you want to murder all the happiness and joy in your life, all you have to do is be part of social media. And why is that, Michael? Why, why does, why does anti-social media, why does it murder your peace of mind? Why is, it a, why is social media, anti-social media, a, th a thief that'll steal all your wealth, all your health, all your happiness, all your joy, and all your peace of mind? Why is that the case? It's the case because anti-social media is designed by the most intelligent people in the world Every day designed by the most intelligent people in the world when it comes to electronic addiction. It's designed every single day to help you compare yourself to other people. My grandfather had a great saying and my grandmother used to say it as well. She'd hear us, we'd be over there for Sunday dinner and she, we were probably in middle school at the time and my grandmother would hear us comparing ourselves to other people so well he's on the football team and he's now six feet tall and you know he's now shaving now and my my grandmother who was a gentle soul always interrupted us and said stop comparing yourself to other people stop comparing yourself to other people and it used to always jolt us say i can remember it to this day and she would she had that mentality run your own race you know, you got the you got your ass full with worrying about yourself. Don't be worried about other people. But she couldn't stand it when she would hear us comparing ourselves to other people. And she was just like, that's the secret to unhappiness. If you want to be unhappy, if you want to manufacture mental illness, just keep comparing yourself to other people. And now it's an epidemic because who are you comparing yourself to on social media? Well, my God, first of all, you're comparing yourself to Hollyweird, you're, you're, all the movie stars and the music people and the entertainers and the directors and all the celebrities. People are absolutely obsessed. We don't live in the information age. We live in the entertainment age. People are so obsessed 24 seven. Oh my God, what's JLo up to? And oh my God, what's, what's LeBron James doing? And oh my God, what's Matthew McConaughey up to? It's like, it's fucking pathetic. It's like, like live your own life. Like it's, it's, it's the weirdest thing in the world where people sit there, now it's past eight hours a day. Do you realize now, and this is from Apple earlier this year, the average normie is now spending eight plus hours a day scrolling on their phone eight hours and i think they're fucking lying because i think it's more than that but you let's say a person sleeps seven or eight hours and then they actually have a job that they might do a little bit of work at i, I highly doubt it but that leaves that eight hours right for us to do our own thing uh, to build our world to build things to serve other people oh no no what are we doing what are what are the normies doing with that eight hours of free time they're scrolling their life away. They're sitting there looking what, what's happening in entertainment, what's happening in music, what's happening in, in, uh, in, in Hollyweird. And it's just such a weird thing to do with your finite time. You get one life to live, life is a gift, 
and you sit there on your phone in front of your kids, you sit there wherever you are on the bus or in your car or at your kid's ball game, and you're literally scrolling what God gave you away, which is, is finite time. So, you know, you burn five hours a day, you burn eight hours a day, you burn 14 hours a day on your phone, you're never getting any of it back. Literally, people are on pace to spend over 30 years of their life now on their phone. Think about that, and it's going to get worse. It's not like eight, it's like if you, if you do the math on that, eight hours a day, which is very generous, uh, times seven, that's 56 56 hours a week on their phone scrolling and none of it's building anything, right? It's not for business. They say that on cell phone use, they did this one on Apple iPhones years ago, 97 or 98% of activity on cell phones is personal. It's for personal. In other words, social media, watching ball games, on Twitter, on Facebook, all this stuff. Less than two or three percent for business. They're not fooling anybody. They're sitting there, you know, on their phone at dinner, lunchtime. They're not doing anything. They're just on there. They're fucking cell phone junkies. They're digital junkies. And, they, and they're so addicted to it, they can't barely sleep without their phone. But I'm telling you right now, cell phones and social media will, will, will rob you of all joy, all happiness, and all peace of mind. And I'm one of these guys, I don't give a shit about happiness. I don't think about that any time. My goal is to be relentless. If I'm relentless, I'm gonna be more happy than I am sad. I get myself into trouble when I'm not relentless, but I never set a goal to be happy. I never ask myself if I'm happy. I never ask myself if I'm, if I'm sad or any of that shit. I'm just like, get up and be relentless. Get up every day and go as fucking hard as you can on the important stuff and then when I put my head on the pill at the end of the night, if I'm proud of myself, well, then I'm fucking happy. Then I'm happy. That's my system for happiness and peace of mind. And my joy, my actual joy comes from being a husband and being a father and helping people. That's where my joy comes from. The way I manufacture joy, the only way is to help other people. You just can't be joyful. Oh, I'm, I'm so joyful. I, I watched a great video on, on uh, Instagram and I'm so jo You'll never have any of that stuff in your life. So just understand that when you're struggling with stress and depression and anxiety, it's almost guaranteed it's all manufactured. But it, you, you're literally murdering your happiness and your joy, your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health all because you're watching other people live their lives. Do you know how fucked up that is? Do you know how fucked that up that is to watch, you know, athletes and other people lead their lives? And, and it's just, I've been around these people, right? I've been around Hall of Fame athletes my whole life. I've been around sports stars. I've been around blue chip uh, prospect athletes. I've been around seven figure entrepreneurs. I've been around millionaires and billionaires. And are you kidding me? There's not one that I would watch for 30 fucking seconds. I wouldn't trade places with any of those yahoos. So then why in the world would I be such a needy little bitch that I have to watch this person? Oh, oh my God, look what, look what LeBron is up to. Oh my God, look what Elon Musk is up to. Oh, here's a video of Steve Jobs. I mean, you can take some of this stuff and you can learn and you can grow and I read every day and I study. But I don't sit there on a smartphone, I don't even carry a phone, because I don't want to be scrolling my life away. The average uh, North American now, 70, 77 years. 77, that's called QTL, quality time left. Do the math, if you're like me and you're in your 50s, or you're in your 60s, or you're in your 70s, do the QTL math. So you take 77 years and subtract your age, and you're like, oh, Michael, I got 25 years left, or I got 20 years left, that's a lot. You didn't take into account that you're gonna sleep for eight hours, you're probably gonna work for eight hours or do something, so what are you gonna do with those extra eight hours? You don't have 20 years left, you might only have eight. So when you do the QTL uh, math, all of a sudden, you know, like I'm 77 years is average, not that you're average, but the reality is math is math, and I subtract my age, 56, I'm like, and then I take off another third for sleeping and eating and showering and all this other stuff. 
I'm down, I'm down into like the tens. Like, like literally, wake up. You think I wanna spend a second of that watching Tic Tac videos? Like, like I just don't get it. It's the most needy behavior, especially for a man, to be on there and to compare yourself to other people. My grandmother nailed it. If you wanna be unhappy, and you want to be depressed, and you want to be anxious, and you want to be mentally ill, just keep comparing yourself to other people. Whatever happened to running your own race? I'm out here walking on this track, which is, is a good example, a good metaphor for run my own fucking race. I got my ass full being a husband and staying married. I got my ass full trying to learn how to be a father. I got my ass full being an entrepreneur going to battle every day. I got my ass full shooting videos. I got my ass full, all of this stuff. So anytime that I compare myself to other people or go on anti-social media, that's, that's time that I should be minding my own business. And, and, and I live by a concept in our household, it's control the controllable. We control the controllable. When my daughter starts to say something about another student or another kid her age, I just stop her. And I'm like, do you have any control over that, over somebody else? No, then focus on what you can control, which is you. Run your own race and stay in your lane. Whatever happened to staying in your lane? Like I tell entrepreneurs all the time, you wanna be a millionaire? You wanna be a multi-millionaire in less than 10 years? All you gotta do is build an email list and email it consistently, that's it. Oh, well, I've got this, I'm doing this, and, and I'm doing this, and I've got this, and I shoot videos like you, and, and I'm going to do this, and, I, and I've got this other, I'm going to do paid tra I'm like, holy fuck. Stay in your goddamn lane. It's pretty simple. Stay in your lane. There's only two or three things we have to do each day. I get up and pray. I get up and walk. I read. I write. And then I'm, a, then I'm with my family the rest of the day. Like... There's not 15 things to do. There's five things to do. There's four things to do. But one of them doesn't entail holding a phone when I'm at my kid's hockey game or I'm at her baseball game or I'm at a piano recital. Like, look around. Like, if you're going to live a badass life, if you're going to be a badass millionaire, if you're going to be part of the brotherhood, it all goes back to what Uncle Earl Nightingale said. And what did Uncle er Earl Nightingale, the godfather of personal development, say? He said, look around at what everybody else is doing. You with me here? You listening? And do the opposite. That's what he said. He didn't say do some of it. He didn't say do part time. He just said, run, run. Because the mass majority, the ordinary, the average, the quiet desperation, whatever they're doing is dead ass wrong. Not sort of wrong, dead ass wrong. Everything about money is wrong. Everything about marketing is wrong. Everything about finance, everything about fitness, everything about health, everything they touch is fucking well wrong. And you just participating in social media is enough to just absolutely slaughter your happiness, your joy, and your peace of mind. Like, I mean, I'm nothing special, right? I've got no special talents, no special skills. I'm a pretty average, ordinary person. But I'll tell you right now, I have peace of mind. One thing I have is peace of mind because I do my two or three things a day and then I'm present with my queen, I'm present with my daughter, I serve men like you, and then when I put my, my head on the pillow at night, almost every night I'm proud. I'm proud, I'm proud of who I'm working to be. I'm proud of who I'm becoming. I'm proud that I'm not pissing away my finite time watching other people but man oh man stop comparing yourself to other people you get on that that rat that rat poison social media and it's all pro wrestling it's all pro wrestling everything you see on there oh my god our vacation oh everybody's vacation is better than yours oh look at my new car and my new truck everybody's car and truck is 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 new and it's it's better than yours and their kids oh look at our their kids are so smart and so obedient oh and look at they lost 20 pounds and oh they're making all kinds of money and oh look at their new home and they live on the beach and all this uh, you know what it's almost all pro wrestling what does that mean? It's fucking well fake. That's what it means. Nobody talks about real shit on there. Nobody. 
They don't talk about, you know, the marriage that's heading to divorce. They don't talk about the bills. They don't talk about the illness. They don't talk about the addiction. They don't talk about any of that stuff. People just put on a mask and then they go on a platform like social, anti-social media. And when you, when you consume that shit, pro wrestling, you might as well sit down and watch the WWE. You might as well sit down and say, this is real. The WWE, Vince McMahon, I mean, he built an entertainment company. It's an entertainment company. If you sit down and you enjoy that, it's like a football game. It's like a hockey game, except it's not real. But if you enjoy that and you sit down for half an hour and you, you get a, uh, you know, you relax, that's fine. Perfectly okay. But you don't fucking sit there and believe it. You don't sit there and compare yourself. Oh man, I, I mean, I, everybody's built like these guys and every, like it's not real. So just understand that anti-social media, it's all pro wrestling. It's fake news, it's fake politics, it's all that's fake, it's not real. And you make yourself look like a tomato can, you make yourself look like a punch drunk tomato can when you participate in it. When I see somebody sitting at a table with their family and they're on their phone, I just look at them, okay? I just look at them and say, that guy's poor. I don't care if he has any money or doesn't have money, that guy's poor. He is addicted to his phone, he's a slave, he's a, he's a bootlicker, that guy is poor. Same thing when I see somebody on their phone, they're at a baseball game or a hockey game or a basketball game or they're at Wimbledon or wherever they are and they're not there, they're not there. They're on their phone talking to their fuck old friend back home or they're texting their girlfriend or their mistress or whatever the fuck they're doing or they're watching porn or they're gambling or they're trying to get a bottle of whiskey sent to their hotel room and nobody would know. And I'm just sitting there, that guy's poor. That man is poor. He doesn't have self-integrity. He doesn't have self-respect. And it's a way of sedating and medicating yourself as well. When I see somebody on anti-social media, I'm like, all you're doing is trying to escape. You're trying to escape your sadness. You're trying to escape your loneliness instead of getting out and, and, and living your life. Put your fucking shoes on and go for a walk outside. Leave your phone at home. Take your wife on a date night once a week. Go to the gym. Uh, sit down and, and, and pray. Like, do something. But God almighty, and take those fucking apps off your phone. Like, I couldn't access social media if I had to. I wouldn't be, if you said to me, Michael, I'm gonna put a gun to your head right now and I need you to go on anti-social media. Well, I'm fucking dead. I'm dead because the only thing I can access is YouTube. And that's it. I, I don't know how to get on Facebook. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I don't carry my cell phone. And damn it, I got peace of mind. So if you're sick and tired, of being happy, sad, lonely, depressed, anxious, up and down peaks and valleys. All you have to do is put the phone away, get off social media completely, like off it completely, and stop comparing yourself to others. You shouldn't compare yourself to me. I have my job to do. I have my life to live, and you should be thinking independently for yourself. You should be setting your own goals, and you don't wanna trade places with me and I don't wanna trade places with you. You learn stuff from other people, you get around high value people, and, and, and it's like there's nothing more powerful than environment and positive association. Iron, iron sharpens iron, you know that. But your goal isn't to become somebody else. Your goal is to become the best version of you. And you can't become the best version of you comparing yourself to other people. Run your own race, stay in your lane, and stop participating in pro wrestling. It's fake, it's toxic, and it's rat poison to your happiness, your joy, and your peace of mind. See, I feel good getting that off my chest. I had to get that off my chest. I can't stand big tech. I can't stand cell phone addiction. I can't stand anti-social media. So I feel a little bit better. I shot this video, I'll send it to Mark, and I'll put my phone away for the next two days. I won't even touch my phone on a Saturday or a Sunday. It'll be lost until Monday when I have to shoot another video. Listen, if you need, if you need iron to sharpen iron and you're not happy with the first six months of your year, I'm, start, I'm inviting 50, I'm inviting 50 
of my brothers, you include it, that are 50 plus in age uh, to a mastermind. I'm starting in August. If you're interested in, in applying, doesn't mean you have to join, write brass balls in the comment below. Brass balls. And then I'll send you some details in a couple of days when I actually have some details. It's going to be three live events in Florida throughout the year. It's $9.97 a month, $997 a month. Um, and it's the only way that you and I can work together this year. I took a year off from masterminds. I friggin' miss it. I love coaching. I don't care if I'm coaching tennis or hockey or email or men. I just love coaching. So I've missed it. I can't wait to get started in August. If you want to be a part of an elite brotherhood, if you want to get around me and you want to get around other elite men this year and you're, and you're just not satisfied with where you are, then write brass balls in the comment below and I'll send you some details. And you can then decide, Michael, I'm in or Michael, I'm out and I'm perfectly good either way. It's totally up to you. You can download a copy of my book, as I said below, brassballsvideos.com. It's a digital download. As soon as you give me your email, uh, I'll email you the book within five minutes. For God's sake, stop robbing yourself of your happiness, your joy, and your peace of mind. Stop having the good stuff in your life murdered by living through other people that aren't special or at all. And focus on you. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Run your own race. Focus on you and your kingdom. When the king doesn't die, the ki when the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. Make sure you're focused on you, what you have to do. You can control that controllable. Get rid of that stuff out of your life. Get that rat poison out of your life and watch your happiness, watch your joy, and watch your peace of mind explode. Two words that change my life, two words that can change yours. Be relentless.